Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Art as Well. This is our 24th uh, episode, and I'm delighted this morning to welcome Margaret Becker, uh, who's our guest artist today. Uh, Margaret is a renowned uh, stained glass um, artist and also printmaker. And about 23 years ago or so, she started up the Leinster um, printmaking studio down in Clane in County Kildare in Ireland. And uh, she's had an amazing career, and I'm delighted to welcome her here today. So, Margaret, good morning to you. Thank you, Alan, and great to be here. Thank you for asking me. <laughs> not, not at all, a pleasure. So whereabouts are you at the moment? Uh, we're in my studio in mm -hmm. Clane, in Loch Inure. Very good. And that's that is that in, in, in County Kildare, yeah? Oh, sorry, in County Kildare. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. And, and you also have your, your studio in the Leinster Printing. And we have a studio yeah. in Leinster Print Studio in Clane, which yeah. is about five minutes from here. And you, you actually founded that? I actually founded that uh, with a lot of help. 10 years, uh, sorry, we started off 23 years ago. We started with one press and 10 artists. And now we have five presses and approximately 30-ish artists from all around Leinster and Fantastic. further afield. Yeah. Yes, yes. And tell me, just going, going back in time a bit, um, w w when did your sort of interest in art uh, arise? I mean, was, was it from a very early age or were your parents involved in art? No, funnily enough, I, but I, th I think my mother did have a, um, a nun who could draw, and that was the only connection. Um, but I just always had an interest, and that was really uh, nourished by an aunt and uncle who didn't have children, who lived in Fitzwilliam Square, mm -hmm. and in fact lived above, above Jack Yates, the painter. And when I was going to visit my aunt one day, we were climbing the stairs, and the door opened and I came Jack Yates to go across the uh, corridor or whatever to his studio. And the aunt introduced me as her niece who loved drawing. I think it was about six or seven at the time. Uh, anyway, this lovely man, and he, he was such a gentle, lovely person, Jack Yates, but he took me by the hand to go into his studio. And I remember being shocked by what I saw there, an enormous painting full of a mess of color. And I couldn't make head or tail to this um, artist's painting. And worse was to come, because he said, holding one hand and pointing with the other, do you see the fairies? And I could not see a fairy, and I did not know what to say. But anyway, uh, it was an amazing experience, actually. Afterwards. You were suitably polite. I was suitably polite, struck down. <laughs> Well, isn't that amazing? And, you know, the interesting thing is I didn't realise that, that he had a studio there, but uh, I, I am a member of the United Arts Club, which is around the corner oh, yeah. in 3 Upper Fitzwilliam Street. And um, I'm told that, that he, he was a, a member there. And, in fact, he visited the place almost every day. So oh, now right. I understand why, because he was only around the corner. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Very yeah, good, very good. Yeah, and we, I visited him a lot when he was in Portobello. And then at the age of about 12... Um, I my first Christmas job was the Koala Press was down the road. We lived in Palmerston Road and they were not far away. And um, I hand painted his um, Christmas cards. Um, and I always picked those because they had horses and, um, you know, that's when he was doing all his very figurative stuff. Yes. yes so yes. It, it was a great introduction through the through this aunt and uncle who were very involved in all the arts. Right. Yeah. And, and what, was he as famous then as he is now? Oh, gosh, yes, I think he was. was he? I think it was just starting where he had, you know, he was losing his sight at that time. Mm -hmm. I think it was cataracts, probably. And yes. this is when he started changing uh, into his abstract sort of way, if you like. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, um, the American market really made him. Yes. And um, from there on, he was yeah. very, very yeah. famous. I mean, yeah. for, for, the, for those who may not know, Jack, Jack Yates, uh, brother of W.B. Yates, yes. um, was, was one of our more preeminent artists and, and remains so yeah. <laughs> in, yeah. in yeah. reputation. Absolutely. Very so, interesting. So, yeah. so OK, so that, that was when you were seven. You grew up and you were drawing and all that kind of thing. So did right. you pursue the arts in terms of your education? 
Yes, I, I did. School was a disaster. I wasn't good at anything and I was really bored, probably. I was good at yeah. history. But um, at n- so at night time, um, I actually went to the College of Art, in, which was then in Kildare Street. Oh. And I did that. I think the last year I went twice a week and I just fell in love with the whole thing. Yes. Um, later on, then, because again, because I could draw, my uncle, another uncle, was an architect, and he had no children. So I was put into his office where I was very um, bored, actually, really, with nothing to do. But I'd look out the window. It was in Clare Street, mm. and every day, all these interesting art students would walk past. So one day, mm. and enough is enough. I said, I'm going into the art college to see where they all came from. Yes. And I joined the art college for yeah. seven pounds a term in those days. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and did the what was called the principles of teaching, which I think is an MA now. Mm-hmm. That was that was a wonderful time. And did you specialize in any particular area, Margaret? Um, not really. I, <laughs> we spent our time drinking coffee. Coffee was a big thing then. I think the coffee inn was founded, and everybody was very you know with it drinking coffee. Yes. And also going to the cinema. I think we tried to fit in three cinemas uh, a day at that time. Yeah. So come the fourth year, when I went back to college, one of the porters says, the director wants to see you. And I thought, oh, God, they're going to throw me out now because I'm doing nothing. But in fact, I have, I passed all the exams and this, that, and the other. And he suggested I did principles of teaching. And that was the most amazing year mm-hmm. because we did seven different um, um, crafts, including stained glass and um yeah that i really got the love then Mm. so that was a terrific time and we go into that in a little more detail Mm. and did did any of your siblings uh, go into the arts oh yes indeed Uh, my elder sister um she paints she uh, i think not late you know sort of in her 20s maybe Mm -hmm. took up painting and paints very well Yes. Um, and gets a lot of enjoyment out of it, which is the main thing. Mm. Another sister has an amazing collection of artists. So there's a great love of, you know, art yeah. in my family. Yes, yes. Yeah. So when you left college then, Margaret, did you, what, what did you do? When I left college, I went to Rome for mm. about six oh. months. Yes. And there was this, I was teaching children English there mm-hmm. and going to the school, free school of painting. And that, that was a great experience. But then when I came back, I um, have to remember what I did then. Oh, yes. I, again, through the aunt, I met um, Pat Pollen, who worked in Antua Glen, which was around the corner again, Leeson Street. And I was much younger than all these people. People like Pat Pye was there, Helen Maloney, Francis Biggs, who were very immersed in St. Glass. Mm-hmm. And um, I ended up sharing a studio with Pat Pollen. Uh, yeah. No, sorry, Pat Pye. Yeah. And uh, glazing his windows for him. Wow. At yeah. that stage. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And um, then, then you married? Then I got married. Mm-hmm. And we went to, we lived in Scotland for two years. Yes. And then came back. And well, Why um, did you go to Scotland, can I ask? Um, because Michael, my husband, got a job teaching there in oh. the local abbey the yeah. benedictine abbey mm-hmm. and that was very beautiful that was yes. lovely two years i applied to teach art in the local school mm-hmm. and um they said oh look you you must, must teach primary and i said i can't possibly teach primary <laughs> teach art yeah. and they said oh you've had an education <laughs> but anyway there i was thrust into teaching a class yes. of four forty yes. um, and but you know we managed mm-hmm. somehow mm-hmm. Yeah. and then you yeah. came back at that point Came back after two mm-hmm. years, and yes. then Patrick, suggest- Patrick Pye suggested I join the graphic studio. So I applied there, okay. and the great late John Kelly was there at the time. Yes. That was in 72. And um, he was an amazing teacher and inspiration. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he taught you in, in art college, didn't he? No, not in the no. art college. No. Oh, okay. Morris McGonigal, actually was a really? great influence in the art college. He yes. was the only person who taught, actually, because yeah. in the art college, he yeah. was a great inspirator. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, okay. And um, then did you have children and are, are they involved? Or, yes, we in went on, in fact, to have seven children. Mm. And um, 
yeah, they, they a lot of them uh, are involved in the arts. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to go into too much detail about my family, really. But no, because you'll start talking about your favourites, won't you? <laughs> I'd be afraid of that. <laughs> well, they'll be terrible, probably, because half of them are here anyway. <laughs> but suffice to say, they're all they're all behind me, and they're all very much involved in the arts, in very successful good. exhibitions. Yeah. And, and, well, I'm, I'm going to stop there. <laughs> yes, yes. No, no, no. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> so then you ended up um, founding the, the Leinster Printmaking Studio. Yes. So I presume that was a sort of follow on from, from where you were. It sort of happened by accident in Did a way, it? because hmm. I was teaching a local uh, fellow through Michael Feenan from Prosperous to, uh, through Nan Clark, who ran the BTOS there. Yes. And um, we were doing stained glass, and he suddenly saw my printing press, and he wanted to know what it was. Mm-hmm. So Nan had paid for him to do a year's uh, printing, yes. and he was very good. So I applied to the art college to see if there was a grant to bring me along further. Mm-hmm. And um, they rang back and said, no, there's no such grant, but will you look into opening up uh, print studio in Kildare. I had no notion of ever starting a print studio, but it sort of happened and it right. evolved from one press to 10 artists to what it is today. Fantastic. That's wonderful. And, and so many years later, and it's still going strong. Yeah, and it's actually getting stronger mm-hmm. because we have new younger people in, especially people who are au fait with the computer. And yes. one of our members, I have to mention Pamela Debris, she's just set up uh, a terrific website mm-hmm. uh, for us. And um, we, we also were shopping online to do with COVID and all that. Excellent. So it's moving on into, you know. Very good. All right. Uh, well, look, this sounds like an opportune moment to show people uh, a little clip that, yes. that you, your, your friend uh, and partner in crime, um, yeah. Brida Smith from Kilcock Art Gallery, down yeah. there in, in, in County Kildare, uh, hel- helped you, you make. So here we are. This is, um, as I was saying earlier, the press room, and we have five presses here. All there is the ancient, oldest one is over here, and this is probably the newest one. This one is made for relief printing for Nino and woodcuts. Um, so that's a special print press for that area. Um, and that's, How many members have you, Mark? We have approximately 30 members yes. that come from all over. Somebody comes from as far as Ben Clody, in fact. And um, they're all around the Leinster area, really. And this is um, the 23rd anniversary this year. This would be, well, next year to be the Yes. 20th. This yes. is where we etch everything. Now, we use um, copper sulphate and salt, which is the greenest, safest sort of etch. Up to this, we use nitrogen and, um, oh, the other stuff. I can't remember the name of it, actually. It's gone. Uh, ferric, ferric acid, which is not explosive. So, therefore, it's, um, it's corrosive, but not as as dangerous as nitrate. But anyway, our, um, this is the etch we use, and it's made from copper sulphate, which farmers use to clean the sheep's feet. Um, a guillotine that was given to us 22 years ago, and it, as you can see, it's very old, and we have to jump up on the pedals to c- cut the plates, but it does it all beautifully. That's the old one. We now have a new one in the other room, which we'll look at later. Which is, yeah. These are cartoons for the windows in Castle Not Judge. There were six of them. And this is the cartoon that's presented to the clients. Um, and if they agree, well, then you go ahead and make it. It's all to um, scale. And um, the, the black represents the lead lines, so it gives you an idea of what it's going to look like when it's finished. Now, Margaret, we'll move over here to some of your prints. Right. These are all prints over the last two or three years. Uh, the print starts off with an idea, a drawing, and this was for the Seamus Heaney from a poem about um, uh, an otter. So this was the beginning drawing, and then this was the, the print, finished up the print. Um, this, again, these are all, we do a lot of mini prints, that go to Spain and um, France, uh, Bulgaria, 
all over Europe, really, in the mini print. Min mini prints come very big, um, and they're all about 10 by 10 centimetre. So we, I do a lot of that. There again, this is um, the Blackbird is a new one, which did I did during the lockdown. Um, that started off with a drawing, and if, and this this fellow up here, these are all added. This was a print first proof done without the, the bird. And, and over the, here, Margaret. This, yeah. No. Over here, this is the beginning of a drawing of a print for the Gerard Manley Hopkins exhibition next July. Other end of the print room, um, where a lot of the members work, is that on the walls. Um, over the years, different members show their work. This one was from the James Joyce exhibition we did some time ago. Um, and I think that was last year we did in Kilcock Art Gallery. We had an exhibition and that was yes, done there. down here. Um, these are two prints. That, that's one of my newest ones. And that's quite an old one. So it's a different sort of um, yes, medium, really. And that's, that's a plate ready to be printed. Um, so this is what, yeah. this, these are the workbenches where we do all our um, inking up and then bring it to the presses to actually print. Yeah. This now is an idea from um, a Gauguin painting. Again, it's an idea I had of having an exhibition from old masters or impressionists or whatever, translating them into glass. And um, that's going to some exhibition. Ready, it's already framed. Um, that's for hanging in the daylight. Whereas this one here, that's from a, a painting by Picasso of mother and child, and that is lit in, with lead lights all around the inside of the frame, and it can be, you know, inside a house without daylight. Though ideally, glass should have daylight to show it properly. This one over here, Margaret. That that again is one again a sort of private thing in a way, um, just doing my own thing if you like. And um, one of the children had this wonderful red dressing gown, and um, that inspired that one really. Um, yeah, that's about it. Now over here, Margaret. Um, oh, this actually is a cartoon of the first panel. I ever did. I was working on through a Glen then, and um, it was exhibited somewhere. And Pat Hickey bought it. Uh, he bought it for five five pounds in those days, and then later on, a few years later, he sold it for twenty eight in in um, Adams. So that was sort of that was good. <laughs> I mean, it's something I'm not very au fait with. I know there are different types of prints. Um, so so maybe you could you could just talk about the different. Uh, processes uh, that, that you do in the, in the studio there? Right. Well, <clears throat> we have um, okay. dry point, which is literally scratching on a surface with a, a needle. And that is um, quite specialised. And it's very good for people who can draw, you know, who are good at draftsmanship, say. Yes. Uh, another thing for people who paint, really carborundum is... Um, a medium that uh, you know that people who paint can use because that's that's um, a sort of mixture of adhesive and uh, iron um, uh, copper, uh, you know, iron filings. And you, yes. the more iron filings you put in the adhesive, the darker the tone gets. So you can mm -hmm. just sort of visualize that you paint it onto the surface, which is called the matrix, which can be metal or um, aluminium or copper. Yes. Uh, we do relief painting, uh, printing, which is uh, woodcuts or lino. Mm -hmm. um, we do photo etch, um, which again is another whole procedure using photographs and etching onto a plate. And also screen printing, which has become very popular. Yes. Screen printing, um, it's sort of instant compared to etching which takes quite a lot of time and, you know, um, I was going to say messing about with acid and things like that, mm. but um, that is a whole long process. And then eventually printing can be, it's, it's quite physical. 
uh, screen print you can do uh, you can I know one member with help did 52 prints in one day well that that's working flat out yeah but so that's about I think I've covered yes I didn't really cover the etching that much we um setting it up we had a lot of help from James McCreary and from the um graphic studio mm -hmm. who said don't don't have nitric acid you know yeah. do use ferric or copper sulfate and copper sulfate is probably the safest um etch to use that's yes. a mixture of copper sulfate and salt do you yes. know that um mm -hmm. is it is corrosive but it's not explosive and that no. that's very um, actually easier method of using than either ferric or nitric. So you've, you've become uh, more ecological yeah. as, as the years have gone yeah. by. Yeah, we were actually the first yeah. green studio 23 yes. years ago oh. to actually open. Yeah, yeah. 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 very good, very good. But I, I must mention here, you know, also, I sort of skipped over that movie to Kildare mm -hmm. was probably the best thing that happened in my life because first of all, I met Breda Smith who's like the guardian angel to artists yes. in yes. Kildare. Yes. And uh, we became good friends, great friends, really, and mm -hmm. down the years, and she's been so supportive. And I think introduced me then to Mary Lenahan, who was the arts officer at the time. Mm -hmm. And Mary Lenahan then retired and Lucina Russell took over. And that's where we took off, really, yeah. because Lucina was very much an artistic background, oh, right. and she backed us with Kildare County Council uh, to the hilt. We get a grant from them, which pays our rent, and um, they look after us all the support us all the way. So that, that was really, that was the, the, one of the good things that awesome. happened. Yeah. yeah. And they, they've been very good in terms of keeping the momentum going. Totally, totally, yeah. yeah. You Fantastic. Know, last year and this year, uh, we had an exhibition, Christmas exhibition with Breda, which was absolutely mm -hmm. wonderful and yes. was very successful. This year, we're going online uh, like everything else. So Super, yeah. You know, we'll see yeah. How, what happens. Very good. Um, but you've done a lot of church work as, as well, haven't you? Done a lot of church work. Um, mm. I think it was the decline of the church um, then eventually when we turned to domestic uh, windows which yes. is a thing we hadn't envisaged at all. Mm -hmm. um, and then fairly recently, one of the biggest things uh, in the stained glass world in my life was to, um, if you like, execute E.B. Holmes' lost cartoon for Clongos. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That was an amazing year, actually, yeah. doing that. Yeah. I had, um, E.B. used antique glass, antique glass is handmade, stained glass, as opposed to cathedral glass, which is machine made. It's yes. very pure and um, it's very uneven. Therefore, it's got lots of shades and different blemishes, if you yes. like, which make it all more interesting. Mm -hmm. And Helen Maloney had died and she had left me her, all her glass. Oh. So I had this wonderful um, palette, if you like, of glass. And as Helen was an Evie Home disciple, and mm -hmm. um, all Evie's colours were there. So it was a very easy um, a commission to actually yes. do. Um, it, it was a thrilling, thrilling thing, something I never have envisaged doing. Yes. And um, I, I suppose in all it took about a year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it took me another year to recover. I just went into it. <laughs> What's the use of doing any more? <laughs> I know, yeah. And, and yeah. the ultimate, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, I mean, wh what would you say is, is, is the most outstanding highlight of your, your artistic career? That, that, that certainly was. Mm -hmm. And I suppose in a way, um, you know, founding the Prince Studio. Yes. Uh, because now after three years, I can see um, sort of standing back from it, mm -hmm. what's happening. Yes. Um, so many people are joining and mm -hmm. taking part. Um, and it's it's almost like a co-op in that all the stu all the artists that have stayed there mm -hmm. are giving of themselves, you know, to make it work. Yes, we have that sort of well of goodwill, if yeah. you like, and collaboration, collaboration, mm -hmm. and it's based really on the, like Pat Hickey and Liam Miller and Sarah Yates and. Um, Another word, um, I've forgotten the next name. 
founded the graphic studio yes. as a place for artists to come and print. Mm -hmm. The graphic got a bit sort of commercial in a way, uh, you know, people saw it uh, quite rightly as a place to make a living and um, sell prints and things like that. Mm -hmm. And th there was the inevitable split um, and John Kelly founded the Black Church. And that was one of my regrets. I didn't follow John because I had the great respect for him and he taught me so much. But I just had the twins, number six and seven of the yes. children. Oh, really? um, yeah. I was following the press and I couldn't bear the thought of not having my two afternoons a week um, without that. So I didn't join there, but stayed on in the graphic. Um, and then finding, finding when we moved to Tain, it was obviously a bit of a thing to go up and down to Dublin. Um, as I say, it started by mistake, the print studio. Um, and it's based on the same thought. Nobody's turned away. Anyone can come to learn to print. Yes. And it's open to anyone and everyone. And we're keeping it like that. Yeah, yeah. very good. Yeah. Now, uh, presumably during lockdown, you've 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 had to close the the studio or temporarily, obviously. Um, we, and uh, how has life treated you during during the last year? Well, quite frankly, I loved the lockdown. The did lock you? Up. <laughs> I did. Like being locked up. I love being locked up. The the lack of uh, there was no expectancy. You yes. could actually. It, it was an amazing thing. Of course, you miss the family and friends, you know. Of course. I, I play poker and bridge, and that went by the board, uh, yeah. you know, and things like that. But we kept in touch. Um, so th that, yeah, that was good because it was spring, and I loved being in the garden. And so everything was just printing and gardening and gardening and printing and very happy. But then uh, we decided, really, we should open the studio. Mm. and open it on the basis of booking in one at a time. Yes. And that's yes. actually working very well. Oh, and now it's every day is booked up and people are coming in. Um, all sorts of care, distance, spraying, yes. you know, the masks, a whole lot. And, and it's working. Yeah, it's working Wonderful. very well. Wonderful. Yeah. And, and were you quite productive during this time as well? Presumably you were. Huh? <laughs> very, I, very. <laughs> the time. I think there were about 15 new prints, which I haven't actually printed yet. And tomorrow I'm going to start <laughs> yeah. back into it. Sunday is a wonderful day in the studio because it's always empty. Yes. And you get great time there to do. And that, that's what I, that's what I look forward to doing. Yeah. It's, fu it's funny that, you know, I, I have met a few artists who, who said exactly the same Yes. And to, do, to a degree, I found the same that because of lack of expectation uh, on your part, that you know, to be somewhere or to meet people or whatever, um, yes. you can actually just switch off and devote yourself to, okay. to, okay. to the art, which is wonderful. It is wonderful. It's like being a child again, really. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you know, exactly. it's yes. good. Okay. All right, Margaret. So we, we'll have a look at some of your images on slide and uh, yeah. we'll, st we'll start with some stained glass. So if you'd like to talk through these. Yes, absolutely. Uh, this window in Benigiri, this was a memorial window to the poet uh, that his family actually um, dedicated. But that was um, one of his poems about, I think it was winter, autumn, spring, and the tree. Uh, yes. that, was, uh, that was a really lovely uh, commission to work on because the family had uh, got together and he, in fact, the um, poet was a friend of this uncle and aunt. There was so much an influence in my life and knew all these people. So that was a very happy window to do. Oh, yeah. Lovely, lovely. Yeah. Okay. And this one, now that this is at both sides of a main door. That's right. And yeah. this friend commissioned this. And again, it was um, a, a happy um, commission. We worked very well together. And it was... You know, a lot of the glass was uh, that you're not going to reproduce, like the red uh, up on the trees, the top of the, of the panel. That is very extraordinary um, glass you won't get again. It's American sort of flashed glass. And it was just perfect for a particular window. Um, that we, had, we had an issue with the swan. 
<laughs> I remember yes. there was a great discussion about this one not mm. being the right shape at all, so he had to be changed. <laughs> but apart from that, it all went very well. And, yes. you know, it, yeah, it, it worked successfully. Oh, it's very, it? very beautiful. And I'd say, I'd say the colour that it, uh, it projects uh, yeah, onto the, the walls and elsewhere must, must be does really. And that's the thing with stained glass. It changes, uh, you yes. know, all through the day with, mm. with the light of the day coming in. And this is facing, I think this face is north, so which is the best for a stained glass because you get the pure light. And it's not great to have... Uh, sunlight really all the time it's the oh. shading of of the different lights that make it interesting yeah very interesting yes yes okay yeah and here's another uh, this is uh, this is quite new this was done for my niece in in um, dublin and they live by the daughter and they they were well, the heron was a great feature in their life so when they asked me to do this little narrow panel it was perfect mm. for yes. the heron and I just suddenly remembered it. It's, I don't know, it must be about 20, 25 years ago, I think. Oh, really? But anyway, they were very happy with it. And looking back at it now, I like it because I haven't seen it for so long. Yes. But um, that, again, was an interesting to put in the window there beside the door. Do you know, it, it lightens it all up. It yeah. does, yes. It yeah. absolutely does. All right, let's move on to some of the prints now that you've done. This is just a very, very small selection of your work. Okay. Yes, that's an etching. Um, I've become obsessed with hens at this stage. We have our own hens. And, I was just going to um, ask you that, have you? <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with various sort of success with them. And uh, my nephew rang me there the other day, my nephew and his wife, because they're going to go into hens and we'd long chat. And they said, how many hens have you? And I said, well, I'm nine at the moment. Oh, gosh, how many eggs are you getting a day? I said, absolutely none. <laughs> because this time of year, of course, they don't lay. But, yes. you know, the hens feature a lot in, in the house, in my life, certainly. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So these are all... This is uh, the Black Bird of Donor, which is probably the wrong pronunciation, but it's um, mm. a poem from an uh, exhibition we did of translation of the disposition. And um, that was in... That's been exhibited in Dublin as well. That was one of the prints, the small print. There's a bigger uh, etching as well for that exhibition. And would that be a limited edition, Margaret? That's a limited edition. I yes. think there was probably about 25 in that. Okay. Yeah, All right. something like that. Yeah. yeah. Now, this, was my, this is a sort of breakthrough <laughs> into abstraction, which I'm probably heading towards. Um, I, I went to the National College of Art in Kildare Street, and one day we were walking down the corridor with some friends, and the secretary said, oh, come in to me, you've won a prize for mechanical drawing, mm. which I had the clue I was winning anything. I got 25 euro, or not euro, shillings in those days. We all went off and had coffee and chocolate biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a dry biscuit and a, uh, and a glass of hot orange. But yes. anyway... Um, I said, well, look, I better sort of, you know, go back and use these, um, this mechanical sort of thing. And this was the first one I did, and I'm working on a whole lot more. Uh, this is yeah, another hair. That's another one. That's a sort of horsey one, I think, mm -hmm. yes. all counter counter. Um, but again, shapes of, yeah, yeah abstract shapes, really. Yeah. And they, yeah, it, it's interesting. That's a very early etching. Um, Oh, gosh, I think it was one of the first ones I did. And I just happened to find it the other day and think, oh, my goodness, that's sort of interesting. It's it's a sort of marbling technique in that etching. And, um, yeah, it's sort of the background. The figure of the horse is blocked out and the background is etched deeply. Yes. And then you, you bring it up with various methods of, um, of stopping out and in and out of the acid. I think at that stage we were using nitric acid. Mm. But we don't do that anymore. No. Highly it's dangerous. Too explosive. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All you right. know, we just use ferric. Yes. Uh, our copper sulfate. Mm -hmm. um, again, the blackbird, the blackbird of Danor really started a whole series of blackbirds. I, you know, different types of blackbirds. Um, and then I think the graphic studio did um, uh, an exhibition in the botanical gardens. And um, I did a blackbird in the magnolia tree, 
which is very different from this. It might come up later, but mm. this is another um, impression of the yes. same subject. Yeah, I think there might yeah. be another one all right later on. Yeah. Um, the fish, I'm sort of obsessed with fish as well. I don't know why. Or I'd rather just like, you can catch extraordinary sort of fish and um, they can be funny. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this is, this is one of them anyway that is sort of amusing. And yeah. you can, again, um, that's uh, an etching. And then instead of doing various plates for different colours, you just actually hand colour them. I use gouache and gouache. just pick them at and as a limited edition, would you do them all the same or might you do a very Yes, they have to be all the same. Oh, they do, the okay. They really do, which is very difficult when you're doing a hand print. There's obviously, it's when you're wiping it in the pressure of your hand, oh. you know, of the wipe. That, I mean, an expert would tell you, looking at one print from the other, how it differs. But I think yes. probably on the whole, we get away with it. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. Now that that's another dry point, actually. Um, it's actually of my son, who is sort of railroaded into doing piano, because his twin wasn't there one day, and the teacher said, "Why doesn't he? Why doesn't he come and play?" Mm -hmm. So he did under protest, <laughs> and <laughs> gave it up after a bit. But that was inspired, I think, by Daniel and his um, football. Daniel, yes, it's a lovely one. I really love that. Yeah, thank you. Now again, the hens, the hens all vary. I don't know why, depending what mood I'm in, what shape, or, you know, some of them are speckledy, and mm -hmm. some, they all have characters really. And yes. it's just, I suppose, a matter of putting them together. Well, you can get very exotic breeds of, of, of hens, can't you? <laughs> totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they all can. I mean, we, these now, these would all be, that's another dry point. And the dry point is literally using um, a thing called a scriber, which yes. is really like a needle and you scratch it on. And um, John Kelly, who I was lucky enough to um, come into, um, to be taught by when he was in the graphic studio in Mount Street, um, he was terrific teaching. He sort of, you know, it's a bit intimidating when you have um, the matrix, the plate is called, and that can be metal or copper or aluminium. Um, and you start drawing on that and you don't really know where you're going. But John would always say you can never overdo a dry point, which was sort of encouraging. You could work yes. away and you get those really strong blacks by the more scratching you do, if you like. Mm -hmm. And then you again, colour it in afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now that's a lithograph, which I did quite a bit of, but haven't done any since. It's, it's a very laborious technique really it's absolutely lovely and then it was done on these stones which is very hard to get them these limestones you can't get them anymore now you do it on plates but that one particularly um one of the children who loved the cat and she was only about uh, 18 months maybe around that age and she, that cat was fed night and day <laughs> you couldn't stop her teaching <laughs> That that was sort of behind that, yeah. in fact, yeah. yeah. Yes, lovely. Now, this actually is, I called it the lace hen because it comes out in a lacy sort of effect. Um, that was a heavily etched plate and it's sort of embossed. Mm. And all those sort of shapes on it are in relief, if you like. So when how, you do, how do you achieve that, Margaret? You, by putting it into the acid. Yes. And um, you put it in the acid and you keep putting it in and out of the acid and washing it off and looking at it and saying, oh, I could do a bit more. Truth be told, I probably forgot about that. I mm -hmm. <laughs> left it in the acid. So um, <laughs> it was a happy, you yes. know, happy mistake. accident. Yes. Happen, happy accident. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you capitalize on that. Mm. So and when you say it's relief, is, is that because there's so much ink in it? No, that's because all around all those mm. pieces of the, um, feathers or whatever you like to call yes. them, they, um, the background is smooth. They're, they're in relief. In other words, the acid has eaten away oh, all right. the aluminium and just yes. left those exposed because they were covered with a stop out ground, which okay. is actually bitumen. Yes. So you stop all those out and put, put it into the acid. So right. the acid eats nothing but what's behind. Oh, right. okay. Yeah. I love that one. It's, it's just got a wonderful effect. 
it, it, it's, yeah. it's a great event. I don't know if I'll ever get it again. <laughs> there's, a, there's a challenge for you. <laughs> it is. It okay. is. And this is the last one we have. That's the last one. That's my yeah. famous one. Yeah. Because again, it's a dry point. Yes. And it went to a next, it went to a um, charity thing. Mm, an auction, and, was it? Um, yeah. a, a charity auction. Yeah. And two people, I think, wanted it. So it went for over 2,000 at the end. Mm. Very nice. <laughs> Which yes. was very nice to yeah. hear. But no, I don't sell it for that. <laughs> <laughs> Much less. <laughs> but that again is a dry point mm -hmm. with a little bit of watercolour or wash. Yeah. Beautiful. And again, and that's, that's a limited, limited so, edition. That's a limited edition. Yeah. But the interesting thing about that is you, you see it sort of standing out on its own. Yes, I can see and, that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I actually cut away all the background of the plate. Um, yes. With a saw, and it's a jeweler's saw, okay. and it's like a hair a breath, the, the blade, and you just saw away. It snaps about a hundred times. It's mind boggling. But yeah. anyway, you get there and you can you get that relief effect. Yes. Which yes. is sort of detective. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Maybe, okay. maybe now is the time to ask people to ask you questions. Okay. Um, you know, because I know there are quite a few questions that have been written up here. So right. let, let's go through some of those. Um, yeah. I'm going backwards now. Autumn has asked, is there a gallery connected to the print studio? Mm, well, <laughs> Breed has been now, um, you know, uh, yeah. certainly all our, all our work is there. And yes. if you read it in the Kilcock Art Gallery, you can yeah. um, click in there online. A lot of our work is there. We've no specific gallery. No, but you do you, you, you sort of, you, don't you have a gallery within the, the, the studio in a sense as well? We can, yes. We, we've, we've opened it up, you know, mm. say at Christmas time and like that. But it's difficult to get people in. It's in the, the church car park. Whether oh, that right. people or whether we should advertise it more, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But it, it is open to people to drop in. Mm. Um, the only thing is one would have to be there all day. You know, sure. yes, for that to happen. Yes, so and, it should be um, by appointment only at the moment, anyway. By appointment. Well, that's I suppose fair enough, especially this day and age. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Autumn also says, Margaret, this is a wonderful interview. Um, I could listen to your stories all day long. I'm learning so much, also. Mm. Which is nice. Now, Cabrini Lynch, who, who you might know, says, "Hello, Margaret. Lovely to see and hear you. Great memories of working and learning with you in the Clane Print Studio. Keep well and safe, Cabrini." Lovely. Great to hear you. Yeah, <laughs> That's good. good. Thanks for that, Cabrini. So is there anybody uh, who would like to come on in person? Just unmute yourself. OK, off you go. I was just going to ask um, Margaret, can she give us mummies any idea how the hell she managed that with seven kids? <laughs> Because I have two, <laughs> I have two, and there aren't enough hours in the day. So I'm intrigued to know how Superwoman did it because that's an incredible thing to be able to start a print studio, maintain your own artistic practice, and rear seven children. You are Superwoman. Mm. Oh, I, 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 the secret. Ask the children how super I am. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> The thing, I, I tell you, look, really what I found one day, I discovered the early mornings in May. I had a, quite a commission on maybe stained glass, I can't quite remember. And I was wondering, how on earth am I going to get this done? And I must have woken, I do wake early, um, and it was a beautiful May morning. It was only five o'clock. And I thought, my goodness, I'll get up now and go out. So that started a pattern of going out uh, into my studio and working in the small hours during the summer months. And um, everyone was happy then. I'd have my couple of hours and then I could look after the children. They were happy because um, I, you know, was there for them. And it's it really, yeah, you, you get up early in the summer <laughs> is all I can mm -hmm. say. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know really what the answer is. It's just, well, you find a way, you find a way. Yeah. yeah, I think your idea of getting up early is, is very good. Uh, thanks yeah. to that, Neve, the toy show and the likes uh, when you have to go to bed by 9.30, which I do. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm up, I, I get up at 6.30 and I go for a walk and I meditate. I have my breakfast. I do my emails and bits and pieces. And I'm at my desk by 8.30. But having done quite a bit, you know, so exactly. the early mornings are really the yeah, way to go. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. 
Okay, um, now Rupert in Germany says, do you want to tell the story about the picture behind you? That's a good question. And oh, also yeah. Tom says, is the picture behind Margaret a print or preparation for stained glass? Okay, that is, that is the fully realized cartoon for um, stained glass windows in Castle Knock uh, Church there. Thing is that there are six windows there. Um, and this is the, the cartoon. What you do, first of all, you go along. The, the, nowadays, there's a committee and they're all sort of asking questions and this, that and the other. Um, and you really put through the mill about how you do it and what you're going to do and this, that and the other. Um, so usually the stained glass, as you see behind you, all those black lines are the lead. And it all has to be cut and let it up. And usually I gave it out to a glazer to do. Um, and I just did it myself. But at, the, at this committee for, for casting up, there was a young curate there. And Parish P said, have you any questions to ask Margaret? And he said, are you going to make it yourself? And I sort of, he was so thinking, I didn't want to say no to him. And I just said, yes. And then I woke up in the middle of the night. I said, what on earth? How can I make these things so a, a kilos, uh, a meter square? And um, but anyway, I did, and it was wonderful because um, making your own window, you know, from start to finish, is yeah, it's it's important. It really is. So there are six of those windows in um, Castle Knock, and that is the cartoon that you work from. That has been passed by the committee, the parish priest, everybody, and they're happy with it. Uh, so then you make a cut line for the glass and you cut it and you put it together with the lead. It's a whole long process and intriguing. But that, that's what that is. And I think I think that's the um the last supper, that particular one. And the others um which reader is very kindly bringing over. Um that's the baptism of Christ. Can you see that one? Oh, wonderful. Yes, that come, yes great. Yeah, that's yep. coming up. Great. That looks super actually now. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's what they are. Yeah. There are three more which I've lost. I don't know where they are. But um there were six of those. And then there was yes. the windows over the um, the entrance for that church. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Um oh, Imogen Stewart says Owen Imogen. McLaughlin. That's thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. That's so that's good. Owen, Owen McLaughlin. Oh, thank you, Owen, yeah. <laughs> for her memory. And she actually, it was very interesting because um, they asked me to do the windows, which is very big. Some of them were 12 foot going down to one foot, I think, over yes. the entrance of the, the, the door into the church. And I couldn't get it. I was absolutely, I went to bed with my um, sketchbook and my pencil and threw it out. Couldn't do it. Four o'clock in the morning, I woke up and said, it's an angel's wing, the whole shape. So anyway, I sketched something up, went along to the meeting and said, this is what I've, you know, designed or I'm going to do. And they said, oh, you know, that's great because Imogen Stewart based the whole um, church on the, an angel, the an angel figure. And all around her, her work is um, connected to angels. So that was a very happy outcome, really. Um, uh, Catherine Gagan says, wonderful presentation, Margaret. What brought you to Kildare originally? That's interesting. Um, we had seven children, as I said earlier, and mm -hmm. Michael had sussed out this wonderful um, school, School Muira in Clain, run by Sister Perpetua, who was very much involved with the arts and had children doing wonderful things music, art, every wise. And he thought, that sounds a great school. It's in the country. Um, Maynooth is nearby. They can all go to college there. Actually, not one of them went to college there. They went to every other college in the country, but never mind. And um, so <laughs> that, that was really why we, why we moved. And it was a very, very happy movement. I remember um, this is my daughter, Rebecca, coming in and said, Mum, there's an... Uh, Advertisement for a thatched cottage on four acres in Lochinure. Mm -hmm. And we looked at that and we sold our own house first, which I don't think you should do <laughs> before yes. we bought the other one. But we did. Yeah, yeah we did. Oh, that was it. Yeah. Lovely, yeah. lovely. Um, Olivier Cornet says, I loved the 1916 commemorative project, Little Stories, Little Prince. 
in yeah. collaboration with Pamela Debris. That's, yes, yes, that was a brilliant one. Pamela Can you tell us a bit about that? Because I don't know about it. Yes, no, that, that was a great <clears> idea. <throat> um, mm. Pamela got us all together and, you know, fired up with the thought of stories. Uh, nothing violent. We, we weren't going to have any guns or whatever. Just the ordinary everyday life thing that happened during 1916, you know, and, and the revolution and what went on. And I think um, the, one with the particular one I did was, was a story. I think the, the English were in the Shelburne Hotel and the volunteers were in Steens Green. And I think the English were picking off, you know, firing at the volunteers mm. in Stevens Green. But the keeper in Stevens Green who fed the ducks was not going to be put off by all this firing backwards and forwards. And he stopped everything by feeding his ducks in the middle of firing at the English and the, and the Irish stood back and let it happen. Yes. Now, that, that was my take on it. I just, I thought that was a great story. Whether it's true or not, uh, people deny it. But at the same time, I think there might be a bit of bit of truth somewhere in it. So there were yes. stories like that with the story, prints like that with the story behind them. And it made yes. very interesting. I can't quite remember how many people took part, but we still have little booklets on, on the um, exhibition. And it opened in the little museum in Stevens Green. Oh, yeah. For the first time, there were queues down the road. It opened at three o'clock on a Saturday. So everybody was out shopping and everybody were, were, were intrigued with this. And they literally yes. queued up to come in there and um, see the exhibition. Yeah. yeah. Fascinating. Fascinating. Good. Very good. good. Yvonne Maloney says, um, where do you work the stain stainless or at a furnace? In other words, do, 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 are you making your own? Oh, oh no, um, no, don't no. make it. No, the glass is imported, imported from France, from England, from oh. Germany. And yes, there, yes. there is a place that's actually yeah, it's moved on now, but you can you can order it straight from those countries where you, you there is an agent here. Right. So you, you you cut it then and you yes you, you get it sheet. You get it you want. Sheet yes. and you pick the color you want and then you cut it to the shape. And are they large sheets or do they come in various different sizes? Uh, they come in various different sizes. They, um, mm. they would be about, uh, I suppose they would be about 50 centimetres by 20 centimetres, varying yes. in, in yes. size. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, Yvonne continues, and what do you think of Harry Clark? I adore his work. Your work is quite <laughs> extraordinary. I am not I want a Harry <laughs> person. I'm an Evie Hone person. Think about okay. it, Harry Clark. They've been compared. Uh, Harry Clark's been compared to a, a chest of jewels, and Evie Holmes being compared to a garden of flowers. It's an interesting sort of thought. Mm -hmm. But um, Harry Clark was an illustrator, really, and he yes. painted on glass and beautifully painted and very decorative. Where Evie Hone and the technique for Harry Clark was actually putting the um, glass down on the bench on top of the cartoon and tracing and painting meticulously um, mm -hmm. all the um, the paint. And then yes. it was another cause. Whereas Evie Hone uh, had her window, uh, her glass up against a window and painted freely. Very, mm -hmm. so all the glass was the thing that came through, really. She bought right. glass back because it had sort of, if you like, deteriorated over the years by becoming mm. too technical, you know, and yes, she yes. went back to the pure glass. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. very good. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, somebody asked, the iPad, I don't know who iPad is, <laughs> but uh, Margaret, how much were you influenced by Patrick Pye? A lot, uh, I'd say. Huh? Yes, a lot, a lot, really. Uh, mm. I, <laughs> I didn't like his religious work. Because I think every no. every um, every Christ was Patrick, if you like. No, I don't yes. mean to, I don't mean to be specific, <laughs> but um, I loved his landscape and his still life. I thought yes. they were so beautiful, so simple. Somehow, well, the religious ones are very deep, probably too yeah. deep for me, really, um, but very beautiful. And his windows in Glenstore. Um, they were particularly lovely, and I glazed those. Glazing mm. is actually letting it together and soldering and all that sort of thing. Yes. Um, 
and they're very, yeah, they're very beautiful. He's I'm looking forward to seeing those because I went to school there. And uh -huh, um, right. yeah, so I know the church well, obviously, well, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll be looking at, at the stained glass in a different light, if you'll excuse <laughs> like the pun, completely. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, Owen says, fascinating talk, talk. Loved to hear about the stained glass. Yeah, it's a fascinating subject. Yes, it is actually. It's yeah. very fascinating. The way it has developed now, um, people doing glass in a different way, you mm. know, not doing the old traditional way of leading it up, but should we call it loose glass or uh, sort of molten glass? Uh, hard to describe, but it, it's not, not the traditional way, it's a new way. Yeah. Right. Fused, actually, Breedith's helping me Fused. out there. Fused. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Fused. Yeah. 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 Okay. Any other questions before I ask my final question? I have a question. Does anyone want to come in? Yes, of course, Jack. Come on in. Uh, Margaret, uh, love your talk. Uh, what do you prefer, printmaking or stained glass? Yeah. And how do they and how do they influence each other? They do. They influence each other a little bit, probably. Um, but funny, I don't think of one when I'm doing the other, if you like. Um, sometimes uh, the prints may have a bit of stained glass effect on them. Um, but actually, no, I love doing both. And if I've done printing for a long time, it's nice to pick up glass. Mm. But I do... Overall, I think possibly working with glass, I prefer to work with glass, really, rather than printing, because it's just the actual um, hands-on thing of glass mm. that is so exciting, and the different colours, and just picking up the colours. Patrick Pye used to hold up in colours, and say, oh, look at this sexy colour. <laughs> um, I, you know, I don't know what he meant by that, but anyway, it, 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 it's a thrill that you get from from glass, which is a living thing, really. Yes, and especially yes. French glass, as I was saying earlier, it's full of bubbles and sort of blemishes, really, which make it interesting, catch the nice in a different way. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think, yeah, I, I work from one to the other, really, you know, okay. separately. Yeah. Thanks for that, Jack. What, what are your plans for 2021? What's what's in the, uh, the offering there, for you? There are various exhibitions coming up now in mm -hmm. in at Easter. Reed is hosting um, an exhibition for for the studio and invited guests as well on mm -hmm. heritage, which will be yes. a very interesting thing, which is moving on to Italy in November. And um, those are the two main things I think at the moment. Also, I just want to uh, print all those uh, prints I started in the lockup. Mm. Yes. And yes, maybe yes. keep searching for those fairies. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie hates his fairies. Jackie hates his fairies, exactly. Do you know, when you look at his work, I'm sure you could see some of them there. Oh, yes. Yeah. I think I'd like to go back and look again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Listen, Margaret, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. And I'm delighted that so many people came along, uh, not just family, but people from Canada, Germany, all sorts of places. And uh, you're all very good to be here. I really do appreciate it. And um, I'm delighted they got the opportunity to, to hear you talk. And many more will in our, in our video when, when we produce that as well. So thank you. It's been an absolute delight talking to you. Alan, thank you. You've been wonderful. You remind me of David Frost years ago. <laughs> oh, he's <laughs> much more austere than I am. <laughs> oh, no, he was a great interviewer. He got Carl <laughs> Keenan to come out very strongly about some, yeah. you know, thing that happened. Humana Vita, I think. But it, it sure. was rolled out to the interviewer. <laughs> thank you, oh, well, Alan. You're very really kind. Good. So for those of you who are watching this on video, uh, if you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe because the more subscribers we have, the more interesting it is for the viewers uh, in the sense that it'll attract more people uh, like Margaret um, to, to uh, feature on the art as well. So thank you all for, for uh, taking the time to be with us this morning. I really appreciate it. And thank you again, Margaret, for everything.
Take care, and, everybody. A, a, a last yeah. thing, Aaron. I, a yes. big thank you to Breeder Smith, who's oh, absolutely. been holding my hand. <laughs> who's, yes. who's, no, she didn't push me, but she gently encouraged me. Into <laughs> she she, cer- she <laughs> certainly did. A big thank you to Breeder. And again, we'll have a link to... Um, to Kilcock Art Gallery as well on, 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 yeah, our, yes. on, on our description under the video. Yeah. Great.